Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live session on WinUI. I'm Ryan Demopoulos, a member of the WinUI team, and I'm joined today by Miguel Ramos, another member of our team who's here to show you a demo later on in the session. Miguel and I have about 20 minutes of content that we're going to share with you today, and then we'll uh, take some Q&A at the end of this session. 20 minutes is a short amount of time, but we have lots of content to share. So before we dive in, let me say that my hope and goal today is to leave you with this key takeaway. WinUI 3 will provide a state-of-the-art UX framework for every Windows developer. If you maintain or create new Windows desktop applications, this talk is for you, and we'll spend the balance of time highlighting why. To get started, let's talk about what WinUI is and also what it can do for you. To really understand what WinUI is, it's useful to review a bit of history. Let's go back to 1992, when the Microsoft Foundation class library brought C++ developers an object-oriented UI framework to create apps for Windows. Back then, the latest version of Windows was 3.1, and computers looked something like what you see on the screen. MFC was built around our Windows Common Controls, and at the time, it was the state-of-the-art UI framework for building great apps for Windows on devices like these. Next, let's fast forward to 2002, when WinForms was released, along with the exciting new .NET framework. WinForms was a lot like MFC in the sense that it also wrapped our Windows Common Controls, and it introduced some great productivity improvements, but it wasn't quite state-of-the-art to replace MFC because uh, it could only be used in .NET apps, and that left MFC as remaining the state of the art for native C++ development. Four years later, when WPF came out, it was also aimed at the .NET developer. It brought new and exciting capabilities and powerful uh, abilities to the .NET scene that uh, could allow you to take advantage of hardware and device improvements happening to laptops and desktops that were advancing at the time. So. Very clearly, it was state-of-the-art for .NET developers when it arrived, but not every .NET developer needed all that power. And in terms of productivity and also just familiarity, WinForms was still state-of-the-art for many people in the .NET community. And so when you add all this back up, back in 2006, there were now three great frameworks for building client apps that could easily be considered state-of-the-art to different sets of Windows developers with different preferences and different goals. And of course, the story doesn't end there. In 2012, Windows 8 was released and it included a new built-in XAML-based UI framework meant to help developers produce a new style of app, sometimes referred to as Metro apps or store apps. This platform eventually evolved into what you now know today as the universal Windows platform. So today we call that UI framework UWP XAML. UWP XAML framework is Microsoft's most advanced state-of-the-art framework for building Windows development today. It brings even more new capabilities to the scene. It's built on our latest graphical engine. It embodies our fluent design system, and it's designed to meet the expanding ecosystem of devices that is unfolding in our industry that spans desktops and laptops and tablets and two-in-ones and consoles and even super fancy stuff like the HoloLens. And importantly, UWP XAML can also be used in C++, uh, but also .NET, and so you might be thinking, well, surely UWP XAML must have been the framework to replace all these other frameworks to the left as the sort of new state of the art. And the answer, of course, is not exactly. UWP XAML only works in UWP apps, which are a different type of app than what's produced by the frameworks when you use them on the left. We call these left side apps desktop or Win32 apps. And these two types of apps have different sets of APIs that you can call and different ecosystems of library that have been built for them. And so if you're a Windows developer, say a MFC or a WinForms or a WPF developer, and you decide you want to use UWP XAML, you also have to buy into your app being a UWP app. And for some people, that's fine. But for others, it can be a blocker. And usually, some sort of security container uh, restriction is often the main issue there. And so. Here we are, we've got four state-of-the-art UI frameworks from Microsoft to build Windows client apps, and one of them is just about uh, getting to 30 years old. With this history in mind, now we can really dig into what WinUI is and also what it can do for you. WinUI stands for the Windows UI library, and many of you might already know and use WinUI today since it's a product in market. We call this product WinUI 2 series, or less formally, just WinUI 2. 
WinUI 2 is a library of UI controls and styles for UWP XAML apps. It's mature and it's been shipping since October 2018. And the latest version, uh, 2.4, just came out uh, about two weeks ago. If you're a UWP XAML developer today and you're not using WinUI, you should look into it. It's how we ship all the latest and greatest uh, fluent controls and styles to you. Well, WinUI 2 is a library of controls and styles for UWP XAML. WinUI 3 is literally the entire code base of UWP XAML, plus all of WinUI 2's controls and styles, plus other powerful layers of Windows technology, including the Windows 10 visual layer, all wrapped up into a single UI framework. And this framework will ship independently of the operating system on its own cadence, just like WinUI 2 does today. And most importantly of all, WinUI 3 will work in any type of app. It will work in UWP apps, but also in desktop apps as well. And I'll call you back to the one big takeaway that I wanted everyone to get out of this session. WinUI 3 will provide a state-of-the-art UX framework for every Windows developer. You've told us to tear down the walls between Win32 and UWP, and as you've already heard from Kevin Gallo earlier during the keynote, uh, WinUI 3 will be the first of many Windows Platforms technology to do this. This whole broad initiative is called Project Reunion, and at the end of the session, I'll provide details on where you can learn more about that. All of this adds up to three big advantages that WinUI will provide for everyone who wants to use it. First of all, it'll offer cutting edge fluent controls and styles for apps that really care about having the very best user experience they can get on Windows. Second, WinUI 3 itself is implemented in C++. And so no matter whether you're using it from C++ or if you're using it from .NET, your UI will have native performance and it won't pull in the .NET CLR on its own uh, without you deciding to take your app to .NET as well. And finally, because WinUI 3 will ship separately from the operating system, that means you get to decide when you upgrade. So if you're happy with WinUI 3.1, you don't ever have to move to version 3.2. The choice is entirely up to you. There's two other things I want to point out here. First, you can see that I wrote a UX framework rather than the UX framework. Uh, when WinUI 3 becomes ready for use in production apps, there's still good reasons to use the previous technologies listed here. Uh, the obvious one is that there are hundreds of millions of apps written with these existing frameworks, and they can't and really shouldn't be rewritten, and that's fine. Uh, and even for new apps, these older frameworks might be the right choice in some situations. For example, people have familiarity with them and they might just meet your needs just fine. When UI3 isn't about replacing Microsoft's UI frameworks, uh, it's about offering everyone a modernized choice, something new uh, for those that want a contemporary option that offers native performance, puts you in control, and works best with today's advanced devices with high DPI screens and all the various latest types of inputs that have emerged. And second, for UWP developers, you shouldn't think of WinUI 3 as a new framework that makes UWP XAML obsolete. Think of it instead as the continuation of UWP XAML, but it's just kind of rebranded. Basically, it's just the next version of UWP XAML, but now everybody will be able to use it. Some of you will be able to upgrade from UWP XAML to WinUI 3 just as easily as doing a find and replace operation to change namespaces. To give you all a sense of what's coming for WinUI 3, let's take a walk through our latest roadmap. In February, we refreshed uh, our WinUI 3 Alpha and we added the WebView 2 control, which is based on the Chromium web engine. Uh, today, um, we released WinUI 3 Preview 1, a big release, um, and it's the first release of WinUI 3 that allows desktop style or Win32 apps to participate with WinUI in addition to um, continued support for UWP apps. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Preview 1's capabilities in just a bit. A month after build, we're going to release WinUI 3 Preview 2. Preview 1 has some stability issues that we weren't able to address before the conference, but we didn't want to hold Preview 1 back from everyone. So Preview 2 is essentially going to be a more stabilized version of Preview 1, but it'll have basically the same capabilities. And then in late summer or maybe early fall, we hope to switch the project to being open source. This includes not only the full XAML layer of source code, but also how we plan and track our work as well. 
Some of you already engage with us on our WinUI2 GitHub repository, and I know our team and many of the people that I work with are eagerly looking forward to that same level of engagement, but for WinUI3. At Ignite in September, we'll ship Preview 3, which will bring more capabilities and features. And then in November, we'll ship WinUI 3 Preview 4. In the past, we have called this and communicated this as our RTM or general availability release. But as we all know, COVID-19 has delayed the world and we know it's causing delays in your plans and it's caused some delays for us too. Uh, we expect in November that there's going to be some noteworthy capabilities missing in that release compared to what UWP XAML can do. So we're going to keep using the preview nomenclature for November. We do still anticipate that this will be the first release of WinUI 3 that is forward compatible. And that means we expect it to be stable and you can build production apps on it as long as it contains the specific features that you need for your specific app. And if it doesn't have all of those features that you need for your specific app, then we'll keep shipping previews uh, heading into 2021 until we hit a broad level of capability that uh, we, and actually more importantly, you as our community agree should be called version 3.0. And our open source milestone is basically the centerpiece of this thinking. We wanna get open quickly so that you can see the work unfold and you can weigh in on readiness and also which capabilities we should go and add next. And now that you have a sense of what WinUI is and also what's coming this year, let's switch over to Miguel and take a look at WinUI 3 Preview 1, which was released today, but working in a desktop app. Miguel. Hello, everybody. I'm super excited to show you WinUI 3 Preview 1 in action for the first time. The Preview 1 is available today for everybody. Just go to Visual Studio Marketplace and look for WinUI 3 Project Templates. Installing it, you will encounter new project templates. There are project templates for C Sharp and C++, for blank apps and class library, for UWP and desktop. Let's see how it looks like a new WinUI 3 app C Sharp in .NET 5. This uh, .NET app is using .NET 5 and using the WinUI 3 UGET package. WinUI 3 is also using the new c -Sharp WinRT projections. This projection handles all the interop between .NET and WinUI, so you can create and use WinUI classes as you do today in .NET apps using the latest version of c -Sharp, the c -Sharp 8. Let's run the app. This is a simple app. Nothing fancy, but you can see some subtle differences that give you a hint that this is WinUI. For instance, you can see some shadows to improve the usability of your app, modern controls like the teaching tips, support for the dark thing, and our hiding scroll bars. But you already have you already have created UWP apps. Uh, you have seen all these things. It's, this is not new for you. What is new for you is this is a Win32 app model without any app container, no security sandbox. So you can call all the .NET 5 API practically without any restrictions. For instance, I can list the files on my C folder, or I can query all the processes and get the list of the loaded libraries. Cool, right? But there is more. WingUI allows you to create window objects in Markup. The SAML window class is an abstraction of the low-level window implementation used for the UWP or Win32 app model. For example, given this app is running in Win32, you can get the window handle and use it with the set, set window post Win32 API to send the window to the bottom, maximize it or minimize it. So yes, you can use these Win32 APIs that you are using for more than 20 years. This is great. Last but not least, we said before that you can create desktop WinUI apps in C++ as well. 
this project have exactly the same UI I showed you before, the, si the same XAML markup, but it used C17. For example, is using the standard file system C++ library for listing the folder and using the process status Win32 library for querying the current process. Is C++ is highly performant and of course it's Win32. And this is all I wanted to share with you today. Happy Zamil coding. Thanks, Miguel, for showing us one of the first ever desktop apps using WinUI 3 Preview 1. As I mentioned, Preview 1 just came out today, which means that it's available to try out right now. You can obtain it from our WinUI website at aka.ms slash WinUI. And if you've already tried out the earlier alphas that we've released, the steps will feel familiar to you. There's a V6 that you install to get the new project templates for Visual Studio. There's some interesting new capabilities to highlight in Preview 1. The biggest one is uh, we've already talked about, the support for Win32 or desktop style apps. Um, UWP apps are also still supported, as I mentioned earlier, just as they were also in the alphas that we released. There's also new controls, the ability to do custom high performance rendering with swap chain panel, and a bunch of other uh, improvements as well, a bunch of goodies in there. We've also updated our XAML control gallery app to use Preview 1. If you're new to WinUI, you owe it to yourself to check out this app. It's WinUI's main showcase app that lets you not only explore the wide range of controls and features that are available in WinUI, but the app itself is uh, open source, so you can see example code of how to use those features in your own apps. It's also important for me to reiterate that Preview 1 is our very first ever attempt to get WinUI working in Win32 style apps, and it definitely has some limitations and some stability issues. The most important one that I want to call out is that WinUI 3 Preview 1, which we released today, should not be used in production apps. It hasn't been certified for forward compatibility. And what that means is it will very likely actually almost certainly stop working in the future at some point as updates are done to the underlying Win10 OS. So I definitely don't want Preview 1 to cause you any headaches. Uh, please do heed that advice. Try and resist the urge to ship production apps on it. It's really meant for exploration and trying out and getting ready for when WinUI 3 is ready and forward compatible. You can read the rest of all this over on your own, and I'd encourage you to visit the link below to the release notes because it has even more details than many more details on what are on this slide. Before we end, I want to leave you with a couple of exciting stories of customers and partners that are already exploring Preview 1. The first is Esri and their ArcGIS platform. Esri is a global market leader in geographic information system software. And the ArcGIS platform is well known across the world. Many cities use it for urban planning and modeling and tracking of changes over time. One of the developers who works on this platform is also a well-known uh, developer amongst our MVP developer community. And that is Morton Nielsen. Uh, Morton has been working on, with Preview 1 already uh, to prepare ArcGIS's runtime, uh, a mapping SDK, to use WinUI 3 when the framework eventually reaches maturity. He and the folks at Esri have been awesome to work with, and he's prepared a quick video just to show his progress. Let's run that video. Hi, here I have a WinUI and Win32 app built using Esri's ArcGIS runtime SDK, and I'm using the swap chain panel to get really great smooth rendering performance. Even if I want to go and load something like a half gigabyte data set and not having to worry about sandbox restrictions. I can just read straight up and get this great rendering performance. Even if I want to go add, for instance, 200 million data points from a laser scanning, and this gives me really great rendering performance. And this is something that's going to enable our customers to start looking at this data in real time in these kind of data sets. And we're really excited about the capabilities something like this will give us. It's been great working with Morton and Esri to explore WinUI 3's capabilities. And he's already provided great feedback that has helped shape the direction of our work. So thank you very much, Morton. And alongside customers, we're also beginning to explore WinUI 3 with several ecosystem partners too. I want to quickly show how our collaboration with the Uno platform is already helping customers even ahead of WinUI 3's ar arrival. For those that don't know, Uno is an open source platform for building apps that span across mobile endpoints and Windows and Mac OS and also the web. Over a year ago, we started partnering with Uno to help improve their platform so that their customers could take the same WinUI 2 development experience that they enjoyed on Windows 10 
but be able to bring those apps to other endpoints that they care about. One of these customers is Chorus. They're a Microsoft partner that writes software for Encore support services. And Encore is a behavioral health services provider that allows their clinicians and practitioners to solve operational challenges and reduce stress and burnout in their jobs. Let me play a short video now showing how WinUI 2 and Uno are working together to provide better services for students with autism and behavioral needs via Chorus and Encore. Encore is a behavioral health provider helping children with autism. Their desktop and mobile app facilitates therapist-student interaction. Mobile apps are optimized for therapy sessions where most attention is dedicated to students with buttons and sliders used to capture session progress. The cross-platform mobile apps are built with Uno platform. Therapists take short notes on student progress during a session so that they can continue to engage their students. On the desktop version of the application built with WinUI, the session notes can be expanded, providing all the productivity benefits a rich Windows desktop application has to offer. Best of all, 100% of the WinUI codebase is reused for Android and iOS apps by using Uno platform. I love seeing WinUI 2 and Uno come together to solve real problems, and I look forward to our continued partnership with the Uno team as we head forward to improve and deliver WinUI 3. We've covered a lot of ground in the last 20 minutes, and there's plenty more information out there. So uh, I'd just like to encourage you to take a screenshot of this. You can check out all these links immediately after the talk. Um, just to highlight a few of them, WinUI 3 Preview 1 is out, and you can obtain it from the main WinUI website, which is here. The WinUI team holds a monthly community call that's open to everyone to attend. And our May call is happening tomorrow morning, actually, at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It would be awesome if all of you could tune in and come join us. Our fantastic UWP community has set up a Discord server, and there's a WinUI channel that I and others on the team sometimes like to frequent, so be sure to swing by and chat with us at any time. If you're interested in learning more about Uno, you can check out their platform website. And also, they just released an open source CH9 app that demonstrates how you can make a great looking app using Uno, Uno and uh, WinUI. It's already available now in app stores for Windows and iOS and Android, so you can go and check that out. And finally, uh, maybe one of the most important links here, I want to highlight Paul and Jesse's session on unifying and evolving the Windows app platform. This is the main session for the conference that goes into more detail about Project Reunion. So that's definitely one that you don't want to miss. It actually always happens just before this live session here, so they've just run it once. Um, but if you can catch the next one, that's great. And if you can't catch it here at the conference, be sure to watch the recording after things are done. And uh, that's it. That puts us at the end of uh, content. And I'm sure that there's a lot of questions out there. So let's switch over to Q&A and take some of them with the time that we have left. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everyone. My name is Savoy Schuler. I'm another program manager on the WinUI team, and I'll be the moderator for today's Q&A. Uh, first up, Ryan, we have a great question uh, coming from uh, Edwin R., who asks, will WinUI be touch-oriented, click-oriented, or both? Great question. The answer is really simple, both. Um, it's meant to support all of the latest uh, input types for today's devices and touch and uh, uh, keyboard and mouse are both extremely important. And Ryan, uh, Patrick would also like to know, what's the oldest build of Windows that will be supported under WinUI 3? That's going to be something that unfolds and changes over time. Uh, initially, it's going to be supported down to 1803. Um, but we do have longer term plans to bring WinUI down all the way to Windows 8.1. And the motivator for 8.1 is because React Native for Windows will be built on top of and shifted onto WinUI 3. And there are needs in the React Native space to go down that far. Very good. Miguel Jonathan would like to know, can WinUI 3 be adopted in .NET Framework apps? Or do they need to move on to .NET Core or .NET 5? WinUI is going to use only exclusively .NET 5. So .NET, .NET Framework is not going to be supported, and also .NET Core 3 neither as well. So only, only .NET 5. All right. Thanks for that answer, Miguel. I have another one for you. Uh, okay. Ion writes, 
I want to gradually integrate WinUI in a Win32 app. So I'll end up with multiple islands of Win32 and WinUI in the same window. Will this impact the UI performance? Uh, and will they play well with each other in regard to interactions such as focused, uh, focused gestures and drag and drop? Good question. So let's start with the first one. It's about you, yeah, you will need several islands. The preview one doesn't support island yet. It's going to be a future preview, maybe preview three, preview four, we don't know yet. The one that you are going to be able to use the islands with wing wide content. About the performance is we are measuring the performance uh, of the island and it's the performance is exactly the same one that you get in the Isole UWP app. So there is nothing change at all in the, in the rendering content in there. Uh, however, we still need more, more text about performance and to get more real bits and more scenario, more, you know, depending on the complexity of the scenario. The, about the drag and drop interpretation, how the communication between the islands, yeah, the host always have to do some additional work. In, they need to coordinate between when you go out from an island versus you go in into the island, the helpers, don't the helper like the Windows ML host that we are going to head is, is going to is going to help a little with all these tasks to try to simplify the developer experience. Great. Now another question. Uh, I'll send this one Ryan's way. Is sure. Preview One compatible with current versions of popular MVVM frameworks? Preview One doesn't. We haven't really done much investment for preview one in terms of making it compatible with those frameworks. That is something that definitely is a focus area for us. There's a program manager on our team named Stephen Moyes who is looking a little bit more into that. And so we may have more to say in future previews, but preview one, that hasn't been a main focus. Thanks, Ryan. Edwin asks, will WinUI 3 go down to Windows 10X, Xbox, and Core as well, or just the desktop? The plan is eventually to go to all of those endpoints. Um, that probably will happen in phases. It won't all happen at, at once. As I had mentioned earlier, we're going to be bringing value online successively, but that's on the roadmap. All of those are on the roadmap. Miguel, Brian C. asks, what will it take to convert a WP app, or WPF app to WinUI 3? What will it take? This is a very good question. So if you want to change internally the UI, the thing that you can do is just to try to separate the WPF application using, for example, the, the model VB model pattern. So you, this is the first step. And once that you have this view model separate from the UI, you can just starting to migrate your UI, slowly reusing all the view models. This is the more reasonable uh, approach. Another approach is starting to using some islands. Instead of changing the entire UI, just starting to add small pieces of islands Actually, the model VB model pattern also helps there a lot. Very good. Miguel, John M asks, is XAML necessary to add WinUI controls, or can they be added using C++ code? So, sorry, say again. Can XAML controls, oh, sorry, is it necessary for uh, WinUI controls to be added by XAML, or can they also be added by C++? You can. You can write code. You can you can add in control just using C++ code. However, using XAML is very more uh, convenient because the syntax is very simple, and also you can save a lot of uh, lines of code, and also is doing a lot of stuff for you underneath. Means that for do something as simple as animation, you need to write a lot of code in C++ versus in XAML markup is only just a few lines of code. Of code. We completely recommend just using XAML markup. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, any plans to release WinUI on mobile devices such as Android and iOS with something like Xamarin Forms? Um, there's sort of two parts to that. Certainly, Xamarin Forms allows you to write apps to go to those types of devices. In terms of whether or not it would be WinUI running on those devices, we don't have any plans at this time. Our team has talked about it. We've you know, sort of batted it back and forth. I would say it's not really a WinUI 3 focus area right now. We're much more focused on trying to get to be, you know, the best native platform we can be for Windows apps. And then in the future, we may reevaluate that. Sounds good. That's all the time we have right now for Q&A. So Ryan, I'll turn it back to you to wrap up. Thanks, everyone.
Yeah, just as one quick uh, parting thought, I know there's probably still lots of questions out there. Um, and as Savoy had mentioned, we're out of time. So I want to highlight a place where we can continue the discussion and we can continue it even right now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a UWP community Discord server that was uh, set up by our great community. Um, and I and others on the WinUI team sometimes have conversations there. I'm going to head over there right now. Um, so if anyone wants to come and chat and ask more questions, I and some members from the team will be there in the WinUI channel. And you can get there using either of the links that are posted. And other than that, thanks for tuning in, and I hope everyone has fun playing with Preview 1.